What's going on everybody, Respawn Gentleman here. So today I'm going to show you how you can be completely overpowered before even starting the story. Let's get right to it. So first off, I do want to say this does involve using the sunken airdrop chest. So if you are aware of those, then you'll know exactly where to go for those. If not, I'll have a video linked in the description to show all of the uh, chests that are in this location. There's about anywhere from like 12 to 17. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's a bunch. You can get a ton of stuff from um, and all of it's going to be anywhere from level 7 to level 9. And uh, like I said, go check out that video if you're curious. The glitch that's in that video doesn't work anymore, but you can at least get them in from your initial playthrough. Now, real quick, the only requirements that you actually have to have for this is you need to have uh, the Tic Tac skill and the Wall Run skill. That is the only two things you need. So that means you need to have at least 200 stamina. In order to do that, you can do it by leveling up your parkour and stuff like that, or you can find inhibitors. I'm gonna show you a map real quick of all the inhibitor locations that you can get without progressing the story. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here, but these are all the locations. You don't have to go to every single one. You just need enough to get your stamina to about level five. And then uh, by the time you kind of go through a bunch of parkour and combat and stuff like that, you, you should be character level two. Um, but as soon as you reach 200 stamina, that's when you can do this. Now, I like starting from the swimming pool in Quarry End because it just is a good, easy place to start from. There's a Night Runner's Hide out there, so you can save it, um, kind of switch it from day to night. I would pref recommend doing this during the day because at nighttime, uh, it's just going to be extremely difficult. So I wouldn't recommend that. But uh, just follow the path that I'm taking here, and uh, I'll continue talking how to do it once we get over there. Okay, so now once you've made your way over here, you want to come around to this rock right here. And by using the wall run, you'll be able to come up and jump on top of here. This is why it's super important to get it. Otherwise, it's extremely difficult to get up here without that wall run ability. It is possible, but um, I wouldn't recommend it. So then you just want to jump on these rocks and then jump across again using your wall run. Um, not like that. <laughs> you do it again, uh, but properly. Then you should be able to grab the top of this and coming down this way. So this is an area that you come to, like I said, about halfway through the game, and uh, these doors open up for you, or there's a, there's a kind of a path that leads you in here. But um, you're definitely not supposed to be here <laughs> at this point in the game. So what you wanna do is you wanna head over to this ambulance down here at the end, and we're gonna jump on top of this. And then we're actually gonna use this fence here. And when we're standing on top of it, just like this, we're gonna use the Tic Tac ability on this wall. We'll run up here and then almost at the end you want to jump off so you can stand up on top of this That's the only way to get up here um, at this point in the game and then using your wall run You want to stand about right here because there's a car below you and that's gonna save you <laughs> You want to use your wall run jump over and land on the car and Then there you go. You have made it through that tunnel which shouldn't be possible until uh, the second half of the game but uh, just follow the path that I'm taking and uh, I'll show you where to go next Okay, so now once you've made your way over here, you want to go stand right here. Um, this does help technically if you have the kind of sprint ability, but you don't need it. You just need to make sure you get to these certain spots that I go to within four seconds or else you will die. So we'll just run over here and you want to head over to that kind of fallen branch. It will cut it extremely close, but you want to get right here because uh, there's a kind of a free spot from the chemicals. Make sure your uh, immunity goes all the way back up. And we're going to hop over and we're going to run over to this other fallen branch, which will also let our immunity kind of build back up. So now what we need to do from here, you can just walk through the branch sometimes, uh, hop over it. It's up to you. You want to get over it. Um, so once you're over it, all you need to do is run down straight to this trash can. I'll, I'll use my binoculars real quick. This trash can. It looks like there's a ton of chemicals there right now, 
But as soon as you stand in front of the trash can, not the bench or the lamp, but the trash can specifically, and you stand in front of that, the chemicals will actually disappear. So just run down here and uh, try to get down there before you die from the chemicals. And like I said, you want to stand in front of the trash can. You can see all the chemicals disappeared. You can let your immunity build back up again. And then now you can literally just run all the way over here. And we are essentially on the other side of the map. We are in the central loop before doing any story missions whatsoever. Um, the only things I did for this save file is I literally just grabbed the inhibitors and that is it. So yeah, it's crazy how easy it is to get over here. Now, if, again, if you're not familiar with the sunken airdrops, I'm going to show you the path on how to get there. And um, like I said, I do have a video linked in the description. They'll show you all of the airdrop locations. So if you want to check that out, um, it will definitely be helpful for you finding uh, all the gear that you're looking for. So once you've made it over here, uh, you'll see this bus. This is actually a safe house. So if you want to activate it, you can. Um, I'll tell you how to get back over to the other side in just a minute. But what we want to do is actually hop down into the water here. And this first location, let me kind of come up a little bit. You can kind of see the airdrop. I have already opened it. Um, and I'll show it to you on the map real quick here. Um, there is an airdrop right here. This one, most of the time, will give level 9 gear. It won't always have weapons. Sometimes it will have uh, gear instead of weapons, so do keep that in mind. Uh, the lock is a very hard lock, so you want to try to get down here and not die from uh, drowning. But uh, once you open it up, you can collect the weapons inside. And then another quick one you can get to, let me show you where that is real quick. It's a uh, GRE chest, which will have uh, either level 8 or 9 gear inside of it. Uh, it won't have weapons, it will have gear though. And I'll show you exactly that location. Uh, we'll just kind of keep going this way. Um, like I said, there are tons. There's about like five Jerry chests in this area. And then about 12, I think, um, normal chests. Or sunken airdrops, I guess you could say. And yeah, it's, it's pretty insane. So we'll jump off over here by the flag. Get down here. And I've already opened this one. Yeah, there it is. So once you open this one, like you can see, you can collect the inhibitor. Um, I've already opened it, so it won't let me open it again right now. But um, it, it's got gear in there. It's got an inhibitor um, and it'll have uh, an immunity booster. So to show you what I got just from those two chests, I actually got this level nine executioner's unique axe. Um, it does 324 damage. It's got 18% uh, on power attack damage and 12% stamina regen on power attack. This thing will literally one-shot everything in the game if you do it this early. Um, I mean, minus bosses, it, it may take a couple of hits, but honestly, this thing will obliterate enemies. Um, on, and then uh, the other thing you can do here is, like I said, here's the uh, gear that I found. It's artifact gear. This happens to be medic, so it's got 13.4% on health regeneration speed, which is an amazing find on your first go. That normally never happens. Um, I've got uh, plus 9 parkour attacks, 6.4 uh, 6 on stamina cost, 4.4 on damage resistance at night time, uh, 6.7 on recognition time, and 11.1 on healing effectiveness. So you can find some absolutely amazing gear. Like I said, there's, there's a few chests that give level 9 gear. The rest give either 7 or 8. But any of those before you beat the game for the first time will one-shot basically everything in the entire game. Um, it is absolutely insane, and if the, if it's something you are struggling with, you really want to get some powerful weapons early in the game, this is exactly how you do it. Now, if you want to get back over to the other side of the map, the only way to do that is to die while you're over here. Um, you can try making your way back, um, but you won't be able to make it back the way you came. You'll die in the process. Um, either way, you just want to die. Now, if you have activated a safe house on this side of the map, you will respawn at that safe house instead. For the most part um so the way you want to do get to get around that now i'm just going to show you what option to choose when you die so let me just jump off here and die real quick 
and right here at the bottom of the screen I'll kind of zoom in a little bit but you want to choose the option that says respawn in last story point right there at the bottom um, that will actually respawn you back at the last kind of area you were um, kind of where the last start of the mission was so you can go back to the other side of the map you'll keep all of your items um, you won't nothing will get lost or anything like that so it's a really really easy way to get back is just die if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more dying light content make sure to like and subscribe thanks for watching see you guys next time